Are you in the search for a no-code game engine? In this video, we're going to look at the games that you can make with one of our favorite drag-and-drop visual programming game engines, Click Team Fusion. An engine with roots that go all the way to the 90s with click and play. So far, we've done game showcases on Godot, Unity, Unreal Engine, RPG Maker, Game Maker, and Construct. It's about time we do a showcase for the engine behind one of the most popular game franchises of the modern era, which is number seven on the list. We are Ass Game Dev, and these are the best games made with Click Team Fusion. Welcome back. We make videos on how to elevate your game development and inspire others. If after watching this video you want to continue the game dev conversation, check the video description for a link to our Discord server. We are now making fresh Ask Game Dev content on all of the major social networks, so be sure to check us out there too. First up on the list is Polygon's number 4 game of the year for 2019 and an Ask Game Dev favorite. Baba Is You by Helsinki-based developer Arvi Hempuli Tekari. Baba Is You is a top-down puzzle game where you move around element blocks and logic operators to manipulate the rules and logic of the game. The concept sounds complex, and while it can be, it's also so smart and satisfying once you have a hang of the game's rules. The concept is also easily explained in the game's trailer. As you can see, there is Rock Is Push and Baba Is You. You can move the word rock down to take the spot of the word baba, and lo and behold, you are now a rock. Now imagine that concept across over 200 expertly crafted levels, with new and exciting elements and mind-bending challenges as you progress. As we mentioned in our Game Ideas video, the title started off as a Game Jam game, where it won the 2017 Nordic Game Jam. From there, the title would become a full release and would go on to receive more and more accolades, including a nomination for the Seamus McNally Grand Prize, an award for excellence in design at the 2018 IGF Awards, and an award for outstanding achievement in game design at the 23rd Annual DICE Awards, to name a few. Baba Is You was made with Multimedia Fusion 2 and a Lua scripting plugin. If you'd like to check out more work from the dev, there are more than 30 games to inspire you on Arvi's website. Baba Is You is available on Steam, Itch, Humble, and the Nintendo eShop. Check the description for a link. If you're wondering if you can make a Pillow Fort physics-based puzzle adventure involving cats type of game using Click Team Fusion, the answer is yes. Number two on our list is Fort Meow by Upper Class Walrus. In Fort Meow, you help protect Nia, a child who is on vacation to visit her grandparents. While she's there, she explores the attic and stumbles onto her grandfather's journal. Unfortunately for her, that's not the only thing she stumbles upon. Her grandma seems to have become a crazy cat lady, and before she knows it, she's getting attacked by cats from all sides. Help Nia buy some time to read the journal by piecing together a barrier and mounting a defense using random junk from the attic. Help Nia withstand the onslaught of cats with your cleverly constructed fort and unlock new pages from the journal. Like our previous title on the list, Fort Meow was also created for a game jam as a submission for Ludum Dare 28. A year and a half later, the title saw full release. Fort Meow is available on Steam and the App Store. Third up on the list is the Sonic-inspired cult classic Freedom Planet by Galaxy Trail. The founder of Galaxy Trail, aka Strife, originally started the project with intentions of creating a small game to develop some skills as a game designer. While the title originally started out as a Sonic fan game, before long a team was put together and the title was on its way to becoming a full indie game set in its own universe. In Freedom Planet, you can play as one of the charmingly designed three characters, Lilac, a water dragon, Carol, a wildcat, or Mila, a basset hound, each with their own unique powers. The trio are on a quest to take down Lord Brevin, an intergalactic warlord from outer space. While you can definitely see the inspiration from the Sonic series in the level design with elements like loop-de-loops and springs, Freedom Planet does a lot to stand out from the titles that inspired it with additions like combat moves and vehicle mounts. All of it is amazingly executed, and before Sonic Mania came out years and years later, it was the de facto game that scratched everyone's classic Sonic the Hedgehog itch. 
Freedom Planet is available on Steam, PS4, and Switch. A sequel, Freedom Planet 2, is also in development. You can follow that title at freedomplanet2.com. If you're looking for another title inspired by the greats of the 16-bit era, look no further. Number four on the list is Spark, the Electric Jester by Feppard Games. Inspired by the Sonic series, Mega Man X, and Kirby Superstar, Spark the Electric Jester, just like Freedom Planet, takes the games that inspired it and innovates. So imagine a Sonic title that's just as well designed, fast, and fluid, and now throw in a protagonist who can assume multiple forms and gain powers and abilities like the ability to shoot arrows, fireballs, or the use of a lance or hoverboard, and more. Lastly, throw in the charging mechanic of Mega Man X, and you have the 16-bit action platformer fan's dream game, Spark the Electric Jester. The title was primarily developed by Felipe Danelus, who is also the person behind Sonic fan games including Sonic Before the Sequel, Sonic After the Sequel, and Sonic Chrono Adventure. In 2015, Felipe launched a Kickstarter for the title, in which it surpassed its goal, earning almost $10,000 from 440 backers. When the title was released, Destructoid said the title combines the best parts of Sonic and Knuckles with the best parts of Kirby's Dreamland. Spark the Electric Jester is available on Steam. Spark the Electric Jester 2, a 3D sequel, also launched in 2019. One concern that some devs may have is if using a certain engine will help or hinder their chances at getting signed by a big publisher. Well, this next title should alleviate any of those concerns right now. Number 5 on the list is an action platformer published by the one and only Devolver Digital. Not a Hero by Ali Ali developer Roll7. Not a Hero is, as Devolver puts it, the greatest 2 and a quarter D cover-based indie shooter of all time ever. 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 In Not a Hero, you play as a member of a team of nine different heroes whose mission is to take down Bunny Lord, an anthropomorphic rabbit and mayoral candidate from the future who also has his own Twitter account, by the way. Each member of the team comes with their own unique powers, whether it be Mike and his shotgun, Clive and his dual shot, or Ronald Justice and his hammer. There's a playstyle here suited for everyone. The game was originally created in 2013 by Roll7 creative director John Ribbit under the title You're Not a Hero. After its initial free release, John continued to build the game, adding elements from his other titles, Jeffrey Archer and Hackathor. The title continued to be built upon, eventually leading to its signing and release with Devolver Digital. Not a Hero is available on Steam, Xbox One, and PS4. So far, we've seen some amazing platformers and some puzzle titles, but can you make a great strategy game with Click Team Fusion? Number six on our list proves that the answer to that is resoundingly yes. Check out The Escapists by Moldy Tooth Studios. The Escapists, as you can glean from the title, is a top-down strategy game about breaking out of prison. In the game, you find yourself trapped in prison with one goal, get out. Study routines and schedules, gain favor with guards and inmates, increase your strength and intelligence, craft tools and weapons, and learn to fight, ultimately to hatch a plan for your great escape. The creator behind The Escapists is Chris Davis. Prior to getting into game development, Chris worked as a roofer, weatherproofing roof tiles. His passion for gaming, though, led him to kickstart and launch his own title, Spud's Quest. With the success of Spud's Quest, he was able to go full indie and to continue to pursue his dreams of game development. In 2013, for his next title, he went back to Kickstarter, raised 7,131 pounds, and thus, The Escapists was born. By 2015, the title had passed through Steam's Greenlight program, found a publisher in Team 17, and launched. How'd it do? The Escapists did extremely well, earning, as of today, over 12,900 reviews on Steam, where it sits with a very positive rating. The franchise also has spawned sequels and spin-offs, like The Escapist 2 and The Survivalists, 
and cool tie-ins like The Escapist, The Walking Dead. The Escapist is available on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, Steam, iOS, Android, and more. And last, but definitely not least, is the franchise that started only in 2014 and has since spun off into more titles, books, action figures, building sets, plushies, a line of Funko Pops, and there is even a Blumhouse feature film in the works. That's right, the final title on our list of the best games made with Click Team Fusion is Five Nights at Freddy's by Scott Cawthon. If you haven't heard of Five Nights at Freddy's, the premise is simple. You've just started a job at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, a Chuck E. Cheese-like family fun place complete with anthropomorphic animatronic animals. Only there's something sinister about these animatronic robots. Their behavior at night seems to have become somewhat erratic. Rather than fix the robots, you've been hired as a security guard to watch over them during the graveyard shift. From the security guard's office, you need to keep an eye on your security monitors to make sure everything is as it should be. Can you survive five nights at Freddy's? The idea for the title was sort of a happy accident. Scott Cawthon's previous game was a family-friendly adventure game slash mini-game collection called Chipper and Sons Lumber Company. Critics of the title called the art unintentionally terrifying and remarked that the characters looked more like scary animatronic animals. Initially discouraged, Scott eventually took that feedback and built upon the scariness to create Five Nights at Freddy's, and the rest is history. Thanks for watching. For more Ask Game Dev, check out this video on the best games made in Godot or this playlist of more game engine showcases.